develop the ability to share. The more you give, the more you become. The golden rule says, if you want this big flow coming from lots of people, it says what? First three words. The guy says, well, about the best I can do is take care of myself. Well, that's a poor man talking. The master teacher said, here's the key to wealth and fortune. He who wishes to be great, the greatest, Muhammad Ali not with him, follows me to Denver, to the next seminar. He comes this time with his tape recorder, tapes it. That was back before we had the cassette tape program going. And took some more notes. Him and Rosie are there saying, this is really the greatest stuff. And he comes up to me and says, remember me? I said, yeah, Wayne, I remember you. He said, this is great stuff. He said, I tell you what. He said, I'm going to get rich, change my life. I'm going to help a lot of people. And he's just bubbling, going. He said, where's your next seminar? I said, Phoenix. He said, I'll be there. He follows me to Phoenix. Once in a while, find somebody that just does everything. That's what I did when I met Show. Tell me when to get up. Tell me when to go to bed. Right? Tell me what to do. I mean, my plan hasn't been working. I'm willing to follow yours right to the detail, whatever. The ability to share. And sharing now can become a major part of your life process and life progress. Sharing is a unique human capacity. Everybody has the ability to share. How much you share, of course, is a matter of attitude and the personal conclusions you've come to about your life and what to do about it. But sharing is unique. Here's what's unique about sharing. The more you give, the more you become. It's one of the paradoxes of life. You give away, but you become bigger. It would look like if you would share, you'd become less. But see, that's not true. It's one of those unique life processes. It's like one of those questions you ask, well, you have your first child. You love it dearly. You say, well, if I have another child, do I have to divide my love in half? And the answer is surprisingly no. From somewhere comes this unbelievable capacity to love the other one as much as you did the first one. What if you have three, four, five children? Now, are each one of them going to get less and less and less the capacity of your ability to love and care? And the answer is, strangely, no. As the demand and the opportunity increases, it seems as though your capacity grows. And what you give away seems to multiply. It's one of the mysteries and the uniqueness of life. So sharing makes you bigger. Now, here's one of the reasons to share. Share on purpose so that you become bigger, not only for the effect that it will have on other people, but for the effect it will have on you. See, what we want to learn to be is intelligently selfish. The golden rule is a way to be intelligently selfish. The golden rule says, if you want this big flow coming from lots of people, nothing wrong with that. But if you want this big flow coming from lots of people, here's what you must do. Here's the formula. Now, that's sort of being intelligently selfish, isn't it? This big flow of awareness and love and, and profit and uniqueness coming from lots of people, that's a bit selfish, but it says, the golden rule says, here's how you get it. It says, what, first three words. Do for others. See, that's how you get this big flow coming your way. And the more you do for more, the bigger the flow. That's called how to be intelligently selfish. The guy says, well, about the best I can do is take care of myself. Well, that's a poor man talking. Always will be poor. Poor in spirit and poor in money and poor every other way. If you just take care of yourself, you will be limited in every respect. The master teacher said, here's the key to wealth and fortune. He who wishes to be great, the greatest, Muhammad Ali notwithstanding.
<laughs> he who wishes to be the greatest, whether it's in wealth or awareness or uniqueness or response or results, here's the key to wealth, master teacher said. Find a way to become a servant of many. That's the key to greatness. Finding a way to become a servant of many. See, the best way to cure your own bills is to be concerned about other people's bills. The best way to get your own car notes paid is to worry about other people's car notes, not yours. If you worry about yours, it'll be hard to pay. Worry about others, it'll be easy to pay. See, when you get concerned for other people, what can I do to help you and help you and help you and help you? The more people I help, the more return I get, even if it's only a small percentage. People say, well, I'm grateful here. Thanks for helping me here. You just can't believe. One of my friends went to a, another one of our mutual wealthy friends and said, I've got a project. William, his name was William, said, William, if I put this project together and it creates $4 million for you, will you give me one? If I put this together and it creates for you $4 million, will you give me one? Guess what he said? Yes. If you put this together and it creates for me $4 million, I'll be happy to give you one. I'll be satisfied with three. See, that's part of the unique life process. If you help other people, guess what they will do? Share back with you. It's one of those inevitables. Now, once in a while, somebody's mean and greedy and upsets this process, but there's not enough of them to make a difference. Incredible. One of my dear friends now, Wayne Barnes. Wayne is 32 years old. I guess he's about 33 years old now. He's a multimillionaire. He lives in uh, Phoenix. He's a builder commercial builder, has this beautiful home on the side of Camelback, Camelback Mountain, cost $1.3 million. Wayne Barnes attended my seminar 13 years ago in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He was just a young kid, 20 years old, had just gotten married. He and Rosie come to the seminar. Wayne gets all excited, takes all these notes, and he comes up to me after the seminar and says, Mr. Owen, my name is Wayne Barnes. He said, uh, I'll tell you what. He said, I'm excited about all this. He said, I've never heard about this before. He said, I'm going to start setting my goals, changing my life, get my library started. I said, Wayne, nice to meet you. I hope you will. He said, I will. He said, by the way, where's your next seminar? I said, uh, Denver. He said, I'll see you in Denver. Follows me to Denver, to the next <laughs> seminar. He comes this time with his tape recorder, tapes it. That was back before we had the cassette tape program going. And took some more notes. Him and Rosie are there saying, this is really the greatest stuff. And he comes up to me and he says, remember me? I said, yeah, Wayne, I remember you. He said, this is great stuff. He said, I tell you what. He said, I'm going to get rich, change my life. I'm going to help a lot of people. And he's just bubbling and going. He said, where's your next seminar? <laughs> I said, Phoenix. He said, I'll be there. He follows me to Phoenix. Phoenix. Sits there again, takes some more notes, this third seminar. Well, to make a long story short, Wayne Barnes is now a multimillionaire. And uh, he's done extremely well. And he's become one of my very, very dear friends. Wayne probably has one of the finest libraries in the world that I know of, especially somebody that age, 33 years old. Uh, he got the book Think and Grow Rich. He got his journal started. I mean, he did everything, just followed everything. You know, you just once in a while find somebody that just does everything. That's what I did when I met Show. Tell me when to get up. Tell me when to go to bed. Right? Tell me what to do. I mean, my plan hasn't been working. I'm willing to follow yours right to the detail, whatever. And Wayne Barnes was one of those people that just did it all. And now he's wealthy. Uh, when he was building his home, uh, just before he had it finished, just about finished, he took me up on the third floor, takes me on a tour through his home. And he said, uh, Jim, he said, I can't believe it. I've become wealthy. He said, we've done well, haven't we, the last 10, 12 years. I said, we sure have, Wayne. He said, uh, I got to thank you for all of this. He said, by the way, I got to show you something. 
he shows me this unique looking room up on the third floor overlooking the city. He said, how do you like the view from here? I said, it's spectacular. He said, how do you like this room? I said, it's fabulous. He said, do you like the way it's furnished? I said, it's unusual. <laughs> he said, uh, well, he said, you might like to know that's your room. He said, whenever you come to Phoenix, now here's where you got to stay. You got to stay with me. He said, uh, I just want to show my gratitude for all the stuff I've learned. Now I'm wealthy and, and I got you now a place in my house, up on the third floor, especially furnished. So, see, that's part of the reward of sharing. I got me a room in <laughs> Phoenix, right? I'm telling you, if, you're sh if you'll share, you'll get you a room. And that's not the end of the story. I got, in fact, I just got a card. I wonder if I put it in here somewhere. I just got a card from Wayne Barnes. Says, Dear Jim, I called you when I was in town in late April. We just sailed from Jamaica to the Bahamas. And next is Nassau. Will you join us soon? Wayne calls me a few months ago to come down to the Balboa Bay Club. And when I get down there, he said, I got to show you something. I said, Wayne, what have you got now? He said, you got to see my ship. <laughs> Unbelievable. He walks me out on this 73-foot sailing schooner. And this is the picture of it right here, called Windhaven. It's a famous 73-foot catch, neat ship. And uh, he said, I've, I've, I've got me a sailing ship. I said, what are you going to do with this thing, right? There's not much water around Phoenix, right? <laughs> no, no, he said. He said, Rosie and I have got the bug about sailing. And he said, we've got us a captain. We've hired us a captain. I said, incredible. So he finds his captain and introduces him to me. Oars was his name, which I thought was a good name for a captain. <laughs> Oars. I said, Wayne, what are you going to do? He said, look, Rosie and I and the two kids, we're going to take off a couple of years and we're going to sail around the world. He said, you talk to me about lifestyle and said, uh, this is just part of our lifestyle. And he said, I want you to join us, do a little sailing with us in the next couple of years. So I promised him I would. So he shows me the ship. And as we go through, he shows me the, all the furnishings and everything, right? And then he shows me this room. <laughs> he says, how do you like this room? I said, it's fabulous. Do you like what's in it? I said, it's fabulous. He said, that's your room. So I got me a room on a ship. <laughs> how lucky can you get? See, if you will share, no telling what will come back your way if you'll share. Be concerned about helping somebody else with their language and help them with their lifestyle help them with their philosophical conclusions, help them with learning better the taste of life and the uniqueness of life, help them with their financial plan, ask a few questions. Wayne Barnes is one of those people who shares. Wayne gives away the book Think and Grow Rich, and as a man thinketh, now that I've got mine, I'm sure he'll probably give mine away, but he buys them by the box. As a man thinketh and think and grow rich, he buys them by the box. And every, every person he meets that he takes a liking to, he says, hey, I got a book for you. And he writes a little note in it and hands it to him. And now there must be thousands of these books circulating around that Wayne Barnes has given away. Part of his way of just sharing, part of his way of passing along um, something that he's come into possession with, with that he thought was valuable. But see, that's what can happen to you if you share, if you share. What all of us want to do in consciousness and awareness is become bigger. Okay. This cup will not hold a gallon. Why? It's too small. What if you poured a gallon all around this cup? See, it still will only hold this much because it's too small. Now, see, some people are so small in their thinking and their awareness, you could pour happiness all around them. They're not going to get any. <laughs> They're too little in their thinking and their awareness and their acceptance. It doesn't matter how much happiness is available. 
they're not going to get very much. And you're not going to get very much happiness out of the next experience if you don't grow, if you don't expand. And one of the best ways to expand in your consciousness is by sharing. Touch somebody else's life. Touch somebody else's experience. Give somebody else some information. Right? Pass along a book or a recommendation or you know, share what you've got. And sure enough, your capacity grows and grows and grows. Now when joy is passed out, you get three times as much as you used to. And somebody wonders, how come you're happier now this year than you were last year? And it's simply because you're growing. You know, happiness is always available, but you can only have what you can hold. Prosperity is always available, but you can only keep what you can hold. So what you want to do is create this capacity, this awareness, this growth experience, so that when joy and happiness and prosperity and unique things are passed out, you get to hold more. Now, you must also understand that you can also hold more sadness. But sadness is a life experience. You can hold more disappointment, but disappointment is a life experience. But see, now with the depths of awareness and understanding, you hold it and it becomes not bitter, but it becomes commodity. It becomes experience. It becomes valuable. So that when you talk to the next person that's going through some difficult times, you can reach them with your experience because you've been there. You've tasted it. So we all want to grow in our awareness and taste and capacity. A major thing to do when this weekend is over is deliberately figure ways to share. Now, there's a lot of things to share. Share your money. Share your time. Share your knowledge. Share your feelings. Don't be afraid to share those. That kind of sharing has incredible value. And people who share with us, see what great value that is. My daughters and I are very close. Linda's, especially, she calls me just constantly. She was going to take a trip. She said, Daddy, I wanted to call you in case I didn't get to call in the next two or three days. Uh, just to tell you that you happen to be talking to your greatest fan. <laughs> she says, have you gotten any applause lately? I said, well, I don't know. She says, well, here's some applause. And on the telephone, she's going like this. She said, just remember that when you take your next trip. You have somebody who cares. And remember the applause. And I love you, dear. Just the words and the actions and the sharing and the capacity. See, that's what fills your cup. That's what gives you this incredible uniqueness of living, knowing what it's like to be human in all respects. People who share. Incredible. Then one of the most important things to share is your philosophy. Your perception of life is bound to help somebody. If you show somebody your viewpoint, your vantage point, sure enough, it's going to be revealing to somebody else. You say, well, here's what I've been thinking about life and about activity and about money and about commerce and about lifestyle. Here's what I'm thinking. If you will share that with somebody, sure enough, somebody's going to come back and say, remember that breakfast we had, the lunch we had, or when we got together that day three or four months ago, and you talked about those things? I've never forgotten that. In fact, I've started to make changes in my life already. You can't believe the feedback you'll get. Because, see, part of the return is not just a room or some money or some percentages. Part of it is the thanks. One of the reasons I do what I do is for the letters and the stories and the people who come back and say, let me tell you what's happening to me. I'm using this stuff, and it's changing my life. See, that's heavy. You can't buy that with money. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. You can only buy it by sharing. You can only earn it, rather, by sharing. And I go for that. I go for the stories. I probably get as much joy out of other people's success as I do my own. The stories you'll come back and share with me or the letters you write or the contact you make and say, here's what's happening to me. I'll be just as excited about that as I will my own success and what's happening to me. I revel in that. I take great joy in it. One of the reasons I do what I do for that kind of experience of people who say, what you said made a difference for me. See, that's awesome. And guess how many of us can share our ideas? Everybody. 
You don't have to have a class of 200. You don't have to have a seminar of a thousand. Start with one. That's the way I started, awkwardly with one. Let me tell you when I gave my first goal seminar. When I was 25 years old, I met Mr. Schoff. One morning at breakfast, he asked me, let me see your current list of goals. Remember that story in the evening seminar? So he gave me this little formula on goals. Work on your goals, write them down, you right? Consider the size and what kinds of goals so that they will affect you properly. He gave me this little goal formula that morning at breakfast. Guess when I shared it? At lunch. I got a hold of Charlie Garrett. I said, Charlie, let's have lunch. Charlie was a good friend of mine. We had a couple of projects going together. I said, Charlie, I've met this man. Let me tell you what's happening to me. He gave me this little formula for setting goals. I've never heard it before. I'm going to change my whole life. I get together with Charlie, and I show him all this. I said, Charlie, write this down. Write this down. Write this down. <laughs> Let me show you what the man showed me. I said, I'm going to use it to change my life. And why don't we do it together? Let's do it together. You've been a clod just like me, right? <laughs> As I recall now, that was my first attack, right? <laughs> I said, hey, we've been poor together. We've been just, you know, knocking around together. I said, now it's time. Let's get rich together. Charlie said, wow, that looks interesting. That was really when I first shared it was the day I heard it. I passed it along. It wasn't a seminar of a thousand people. It was Charlie Garrett. And Charlie was a little startled by my enthusiasm and my excitement, but uh, at least I shared it. So just share. You can't believe what will happen as far as your life and your lifestyle, if you'll share. Okay. Here's the last subject under personal development, but it's one of the most important. It's called lifestyle. Lifestyle.